Yes, my friends, you read that right. I know the year of the second coming of Jesus Christ, and in a few minutes, you will too. Watch this video to the end to find out what year that'll be and how I figured it out. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Didn't Jesus say that no one knows the day or the hour of his coming except for the Father? And he did, but he didn't say anything about the year of his coming, did he? Joseph Smith revealed to us, albeit in a subtle way, exactly what year the Savior would return. But first, a little background. I've had a lot of experience with the topic of doomsday predictions. A certain relative of mine has been telling me these predictions for years. It seems like every year there's supposed to be some big apocalyptic event that ushers in the second coming, but it never happens, not once. Back in September of 2011, when I was serving as an office secretary during my Mormon mission in Russia, this relative sent me a transcript from a Jewish Mormon scholar who had predicted that the seventh seal would be opened on September 21st, 2011, at exactly midnight. There was supposed to be some kind of a light in the sky, you would hear trumpets blowing, and this relative was planning to, planning to stay up until midnight to witness the spectacle. When I read that, I was like, so is that midnight mountain daylight time, or? Because that seemed rather specific. I mean, if, even if you determined that the seventh seal was gonna be opened at midnight, um, how would you know what time zone that was supposed to be? I would have assumed it would be midnight in Jerusalem. That's the birthplace of all the Abrahamic religions. Anyways, I just figured it was midnight mountain daylight time. So the next morning I was in the mission office doing my work and waiting for that special moment to see what happened. Anyways, I lost track of time and when I looked up at the clock again and saw that a half an hour had already gone by, I said out loud, dang it, I missed the opening of the seventh seal. My companion was like, what are you talking about? You mean the seventh seal from the book of Revelation? I was like, yeah. Anyways, nothing happened. And this relative of mine just forgot about it and moved on to something else, not the least bit discouraged. Another encounter I've had with doomsday predictions has to do with Julie Rowe, a Mormon prophetess of sorts. She has dreams about the future and writes books about them. These dreams usually reflect the things that Latter-day Saints believe about the end times, uh, often with some kind of previously unknown interesting details. There are other Mormon dreamers that have dreams and out-of-body experiences that usually include something called call-out. Call-out is where the prophet of the Mormon church holds this secret meeting that you're only allowed to attend if you have a temple recommend and a year supply of food, like a good Mormon. During this meeting, he announces that trucks will stop by each of our houses to pick up our year supply of food, and then we will drive up to these church camps where we will live through the Great Tribulation. You think all those camps in the mountains that the church owns are just for Boy Scouts and stake youth conferences? No, no, no. They're there for the faithful to live in in tent cities, while the unrighteous tares experience God's wrath and unspoken disasters elsewhere in the country. But I digress. Once during the summer of 2015, I was told that uh, Julie Rowe had said that in October of 2015, there would be an earthquake in Utah that would signify the beginning of the Great Tribu Tribulation. But of course, nothing like that happened, and her followers just made excuses for her and continued buying her books and attending her seminars. But you might say, these are just fringe leaders. They don't represent the entirety of the church, and that's true. Let's see what Joseph Smith has to say about the second coming. Surely his revelations are much more reliable than any of those wackos like Julie Rowe or Denver Snuffer. And now, the moment that you've all been waiting for. Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration, revealed that Jesus Christ would return in the year 1891. So, where is he? We're over 100 years into the millennium and we haven't even noticed. So, here's how I figured it out. Now, there are two instances where Joseph Smith hints at a specific time for the Second Coming. One is in History of the Church, Volume 2, and the other is in Doctrine and Covenants, Section 130. Both of these passages are often cited as examples of unfulfilled prophecies by Joseph Smith. And upon closer examination, I realized that both of them point to the exact same year, 1891. In the History of the Church, it states, President Smith then stated that the meeting had been called because God had commanded it and it was made known to him by vision and by the Holy Spirit. He then gave a relation of some of the circumstances attending while journeying to Zion, our trials, sufferings, and said God had not designed all of this for nothing, but he had it in remembrance yet. And it was the will of God that those who went to Zion with a determination to lay down their lives, if necessary, should be ordained to the ministry and to go forth to prune the vineyard for the last time or the second coming of the Lord, which was nigh, even 56 years, should wind up the scene. Joseph Smith made this prophecy in the year 1835, and he said it would happen in 56 years. 
This would put the second coming in 1891. This date is confirmed eight years later when Joseph was, quote, once praying very earnestly to know the time of the coming of the Son of Man. And the Lord said to him, Joseph, my son, if thou livest until thou art 85 years old, thou shalt see the face of the Son of Man. Joseph Smith was born on December 23rd, 1805. So he would have been 85 throughout the year 1891. But you might say he didn't live to be that age. So he's off the hook, right? But why would God even name that year in the first place if he knew it wasn't going to happen? And even more curiously, why was it the same year that Joseph Smith had named eight years earlier? I don't know about you, but I think it's pretty clear when Joseph Smith thought the second coming was going to happen. But Joseph Smith wasn't alone in his confusion. Hundreds or perhaps thousands of people have made similar predictions throughout the ages, and not a single one of them was right. Most surprising of all was what Jesus himself said about his own second coming. After describing some of the signs and events of the second coming in Matthew 24, Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Some people might try to get around this by trying to separate that verse from the rest of the passage or by redefining what it means when it says this generation or all these things. But the fact is, at face value, Jesus is saying that he will return in the first century. The imminent return of the Savior is a common theme throughout the New Testament. Another example is Matthew 16 when he says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So if he didn't come when he said he would, then I don't see why he ever will. That's about it for this video. Comment below with other end times predictions that people have gotten wrong. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.